read the requirement of the question so let's see the requirement so the first requirement says that uh, explain briefly whether or not the redundancy payment made by ivy to tetra are subject to income tax so this is a topic that we have covered in employment income about redundancy payment and in the previous live lecture i have also discussed uh, a part question related to redundancy payment and we know that uh, one kind of redundancy payment is completely exempt other kind of redundancy payment is partly exempt and the third kind of redundancy payment is 100% taxable so probably the situation will be there and you have to identify the type of redundancy payment and you have to explain briefly about each redundancy payment so you will you can get 3 out of 3 easily right the next task is calculate the class 4 national insurance contribution for the tax year 2020 and 2021 now as far as the national insurance contribution is concerned you might have studied it from the notes that there are two types of national insurance contribution one national insurance contribution is related to employment income other is related to the self employment and in this one the examiner is asking about the self employment part of national insurance contribution because a self employed person pays two types of national insurance contribution one is class 2 and other is class 4 so if you know the rates are uh, you know that the rates are given in the tax sheet about the rates of class 4 just you have to calculate the profit element that how much tetra has uh, generated profit and you have to apply the rate so two things calculate the profit relevant profit and then apply the rates and find out the class 4 national insurance contribution again it seems to me that this is a type of question that you can easily handle in exam so 10 marks out of 18 now the last one looking bit uh, 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 tricky one and that says that please off your video let's school so the third one says that compare the effect of two alternative investment on the income tax liability of tetra in 2020 and 2021 so the first question is that uh, the impact of two alternative investment decisions so two alternative investment decisions that we have to uh, compare and uh, identify any non tax matters relevant to the investment decision of which he should be aware and any other factor that we have to consider about these two investment decisions for this part of the question it should be assumed that the net income in the tax year before personal allowances will be 1 lakh 30000 and none of which is saving income or dividend income eight marks a part uh, calculation as well as theory so the total 18 marks is attributed to this question particularly okay now let's just move to the question so uh, in the requirement we have one requirement related to employment income one requirement is related to another topic that is national insurance and uh, another requirement is related to uh, it again so guys uh, uh, the first part is employment income the second part is national insurance contribution the third part is pertaining to investment income and you will see what kind of investment has been tested whether it's a pension income and uh, other thing like that uh, so now let's move to the question look when we when we have to attempt this kind of question in exam always remember that uh, in your paper the teacher will not ask any particular issue rather than the uh, the sorry examiner will ask multiple issues in a single question so you should be ready for the multiple issues and uh, like in this question so let's begin with the question tetra has recently been made redundant so a person has made redundant from his job and joined a trading partnership so an employee is now started his uh, business income in terms of partnership 
guys partnership and pension income to me is one of the most important part of income tax portion so do have a look to pension income pension contribution as well as the partnership so he requires advice on the redundancy payment you want to know that what is the tax treatment of redundancy payment he has received and is asking about the potential investment in a venture capital trust now we have covered in the investment topic in the uh, uh, planning and the management personal financial management topic that there are different kind of investment there are different risk associated with investment there are different time zone uh, associated with investment some investments are tax exempted some investments uh, is having uh, tax uh, liability and so and so on one of these is, uh, is venture capital trust and about the pension contribution as i said that the examiner's favorite area is partnership and pension contribution he is also asked for a calculation of class 4 national insurance contribution in respect of his income from the partnership that means the nic is connected with the topic of partnership so from the partnership topic you will calculate the profit element the share of the partnership and then apply nic the class 4 okay oh fine yes yes you can ask question fine okay let's move on the information tetra is 44 years old sometimes age is an important factor when you are getting some type of income so age is also important was made redundant on 31st march 2020 become a partner in the partnership business on 1st june 2020 so this is the case related to the admission of the partnership a new partner is being admitted into a existing partnership and you know that when someone either admitted into a partnership or someone resigned from a partnership there is a concept called basis period you have to identify the relevant basis period so the examiner is very smart he is also trying to check your knowledge of the opening year basis period rule is considering two alternatives tetra has not made any pension contribution into his personal pension fund this is one kind of investment he is looking for either to invest in a pension fund so he has previously no pension fund has been utilized prior to the investment considered below now the redundancy payment for which the question has been asked let me just read the again explain briefly whether or not the redundancy payment made by ivy to tetra are subject to income tax so we have to check that the tax consequences of this redundancy payment number one redundancy payment that you have received is a statutory redundancy payment and we know that this statutory redundancy payment is tax exempted if you know it correctly that it is exempt so when you write it is tax exempted when you explain it is tax exempted you will get one mark easily the second type of redundancy payment is a non contractual payment of 46000 as compensation for loss of office there is one type of uh, redundancy payment this that is called ex gratia payment and this is non contractual in nature so seems to be seems to be seems to be it's an ex gratia payment and the third one type of payment is 7000 pound in consideration of tetra agreeing not to work for any competitor for 12 month this is a contractual payment so all the redundancy payments are there one is the tax exempted one is the uh, exempt one other is the ex gratia and the third one is the contractual payment now if you know the rule properly then you can easily explain the tax treatment of these kind of redundancy payments 
So you have to write. Remember that you have to explain. But it has been written in the question that explain it briefly. So no lengthy explanation is needed. No, uh, no time vestige is required. Just to write the precise answer about the redundancy payment. So let me just uh, write it down. The I will see. I, I will write it down. The answer that the statutory payment is tax exempted. The number one. The number two is non-contractual payment. So as far as the non-contractual payment, uh, I will just write that uh, it's it's an ex gratia payment and up to 30,000 pound per tax year ex gratia payment is tax exempt but if there is any statutory payment already there it will just consider the 30,000 exemption limit so the exempt amount of ex gratia payment will be reduced by the a statutory payment that is 4200 so now we have the remaining 25800 out of the 46000 is tax exempted and the other one is taxable so the taxable portion of ex gratia payment is 46000 minus 25000 800 you can find out the answer that is the taxable payment the ex gratia payment is like uh, without any reason any redundancy payment has been made and it is not connected with legal requirement it is above the legal requirement over and above uh, employees giving to an employee it is non contractual in nature and it is over and above the statutory redundancy payment this is called ex gratia payment guys if you have if you haven't uh, studied the topic previously so this live in this live lecture just try to get the concept just try to get whatever you are getting because uh, uh, that will uh, disturb a bit of my lecture it's a request so let's move again uh, so hopefully you will get the point of these two redundancy payments. Now let's just focus on the third one and the third one says that 7,000 in consideration of not to work for any competitor. So this is a contractual payment. So this, this is uh, a contractual payment and contractual redundancy payment is subject to income tax. there is no exemption at all is subject to income tax so this is the brief explanation and you can also write it like uh, you can also uh, give a bit detail like uh, uh, for example the redundancy payment whenever you have to apply tax rate remember that the redundancy payment is to be treated in the last that is the last slice of income Hopefully you get the idea. What is the last last slice of your income? It means that if you have other income, then consider that particular income first and then apply tax rate at the end on the redundancy payment. It means there are likely chances that you will be taxed at a higher rate on your redundancy payment. And this is part one being consider so we have completed part 1a that is redundancy payment now let's move to calculate the class 4 national insurance contribution again it's the profit now before applying the class 4 national insurance contribution I have to just uh, consider the details of the partnership business so you can see that the partnership business information is being there the Winston partnership so this particular person tetra has joined the winston partnership on first june 2020 before that there was two partners z and f 
and now the third partner enters the partnership on 1st june 2020 budgeted tax adjusted trading profit of the partnership for the year ended december 2020 300000 and for the year ended december 2021 380000 now you have to correctly identify that how much is belongs to tetra and for that purpose the profit sharing arrangement is being given so now we have three partners but before 1st june 2020 the profit sharing ratio was existing partner in the ratio of 60 is to 40 and after joining tetra the profit sharing ratio has become 40% belongs to z 30% belongs to f and tetra has got 30% share in partnership business and after 1st june 2020 there is a change in partnership terms and now an annual salary has been allocated to f 24000 per annum and to t that is 18000 per annum it means tetra is getting salary from the partnership business as well as tetra is getting some some type of uh, uh, profit sharing from this business now as this is the joining of the partnership business as this is the joining of the partnership business so first of all we have to calculate the share of profit now few student let me just remind you that uh, when we apply the basis period rule so we'll start from the date of uh, uh, joining till the following 5th april so as far as this is concerned so we'll we'll move from 1st july to 5th april the actual basis for the first tax year is the period of actual basis is from 1st july 2020 till 5th april of the following year now this is 2021 this is the actual basis but our first part of profit is only available till 31st december so first of all we will consider the profit from 1st july 2020 rather it's june sorry rather it's june so 1st june 2020 till 31st december 2020 what was the profit the profit was 55650 belongs to tetra but in the actual basis we have to cover the period from 1st june to 5th april that is 1st june to 5th april that is uh, i guess it's uh, uh, how many months june july august september october november december 7 and 3 uh, months so it's 10 months so this is 7 months and now 3 months from the next period profit that is 1st january 2021 till 31st march 2021 so out of the next year profit share that is uh, 119400 so 119400 multiply by 3 by 12 and this will be 29850 29850 now the total profit of the first tax year for this partner is 85500 and this is for the tax year 2020 20 and 2021 so this is the first tax year of mr tetra in the partnership business first year profit now as the exam question asked about the nic related to the tax year 2021 only so there is no need to calculate further basis period for the subsequent years it is enough just we needed that and we have to calculate nic for class 4 nic on the given profit 85500 even if you have calculated a wrong profit 
but if you apply nic uh, calculation correctly then you will get some marks for applying the nic rule now let's move to national insurance contribution so moving to national insurance contribution so now another topic has been connected if anyone has covered national insurance contribution rule for class 4 nic he or she will can easily understand my working of nic 4 so the rates are let, let me just write the rates that is available in the exam so up to 8362 of profit there is 0% rate from 8362 onwards up to 50000 there is a rate of 9% and from 50000 onwards there is a upward rate of 2% this will be given in the tax sheet in the exam so no need to learn that particular rates now just you have to apply now see how much profit is there the basis period how much profit is there the profit belongs to mr tatra is 85500 now let's apply tatra's share of profit is 85500 now how we can apply so up to 8362 there is 0% rate so from 50000 till 8362 the difference of profit is tax at 9% so in this way this is 3723 and the excess one is 85500 and the difference between 50000 and 85500 is tax at 2% and this comes out to be 710 and as a result the total nic payable total nic payable for tetra is 4433 now if the profit element is correct the nic calculation is very easy and if a wrong profit has been applied on this so you will get the answer of nic but you will not able to get the correct profit element so you might miss some uh, working there but in the examiner marking scheme the examiner has allocated 1.5 marks of nic you can easily get this 1.5 marks now let's move to the third part of the question the third part of the question third part of the question says that compare the effect of the two alternative investment what are those alternative investments so two alternative investments now the last part two alternative investment in the tax year 2021 tetra will either subscribe number 1 the number 1 investment option is subscribe 32000 pound for shares in a venture capital trust it's a very e easy topic venture capital trust so if you have if you know the rule of venture capital trust then you can easily calculate the income tax liability against this and either or make a payment of 32000 to a registered personal pension plan number 2 we have to evaluate these two we have to compare these two assuming our profit before personal allowance is 1 lakh 30000 and we have to identify which investment is better obviously in which liability is minimum and you have to identify any non tax matters as well so calculation is needed for income tax liability under both cases and then some non financial factors are also needed so let's just uh, focus on the first one uh that is the venture capital trust so let's just focus on venture capital trust first so let me just uh, write it here so it's venture capital trust so let's just focus on venture capital trust vct what is vct 
it's an investment we can invest your funds we can get a return on your investment now if an investment is being made in a venture capital trust so you can get some relief for investment and your tax liability will be reduced out of it so accordingly the rate of income tax reduction is 30% on vct the tax reduction element on vct is 30% now let's see it will reduce your income tax liability by 30% of the investment value so now let's see how we can calculate so we have uh, net income we have profit given and that profit is 130000 before personal allowance before personal allowance is 130000 now i have to deduct personal allowance the very basic recorded lectures will guide you that personal allowance available for each individual is 12500 in a given tax year but will each individual get this 12500 it depends on the adjusted net income if adjusted net income is below or up to 100000 one can easily get 12500 but if adjusted net income is more than 100000 you will not get the 100% personal allowance and if your ani is more than 125000 then your personal allowance will become zero so in this way my personal allowance become zero and the taxable income is 130000 now i have to apply rates on this so the tax computation says that the first 37500 of the basic band will attract a rate of 20% so my tax liability portion is 7500 the remaining portion of my income that is 130000 so remaining portion is 90 2500 the rate is double now 40% and this is 37000 so as a result my income tax liability is 45500 this is my income tax liability but as i have invested in venture capital trust so i'll get some relief out of it so vct relief that is available is the amount of investment 32000 multiply by the relief 30% this 30% is been covered in our lecture so we have get the relief of 9600 and as a result my income tax liability is going to be how much that is 34900 in case of an investment in venture capital trust now we have to compare the other investment decision as well if the other investment would create a lower income tax liability then i will advise that the other investment is good or otherwise the venture capital trust might be a good decision so let's calculate the other side of the investment that is the pension scheme that 32000 of amount is being invested in a personal pension scheme now we know that the personal pension scheme topic is bit tricky there are various rule so tax liability is 44500 i guess sorry i have made just mistake thank you very much for letting me know about the tax liability so mm, where is the eraser so my tax liability is uh, 44500 and my vct i guess vct was right is 9600 so as a result my overall liability is 934900 it means you are with me and you are uh, understanding the calculation as well now let's talk about the pension contribution so pension contribution is 32000 
now i have uh, the space available about the pension contribution less space is there so let's move uh, it after this question so let's have some more space some more space so let's solve it here pension contribution let me just remind you guys that there are two types of pension scheme one is called the personal pension scheme one is the personal pension scheme and other is called the occupational pension scheme what i'm trying to do in the live lecture that i will also try to explain the concept a bit a, a type of uh, uh, refreshing uh, mind that you can recall what you have learned in your lecture one thing you can just see that although it's an advanced level paper but the examiner is giving you some tiny marks for nic for the tax computation for personal allowance so in this way if you learn the basic rules don't think about too much just just focus on the basic element from the recorded lectures and you will get, you can get the easy marks in any particular question so this occupational scheme is connected with your employment income and this particular scheme can be initiated by anyone either employer or a non employer or a self employed person or any person doing nothing L like right now uh, many of us are not doing anything so if you are investing something in your personal pension scheme there are three elements that might be considered first 20% deduction at source you might know it about then the extension of the tax band is a great benefit extension of the tax band and the third one is the impact on adjusted net income and due to this it might create your personal allowance amount so now we have to just focus on our element that in the question it has been written that 32000 is is to be invested so 32000 is to be invested now if 32000 is to be invested and i am planning 32000 then 32000 would be a net amount because we always invest a net amount so pension contribution is 32000 and it is a net amount because we are going to contribute so on our behalf the hmrc will contribute how much divide it by 0.8 and you will get a figure of 40000 so the gross contribution will be 40000 and the 20% deduction at source that will be contributed by hmrc is 40000 multiplied by 20% 8000 is being contributed by hmrc this is the first benefit that you will get from this particular scheme the second benefit that you might get from this that you have to calculate the band extension right now don't just bother about the presentation just try to solve the question gradually you will be able to just refine your presentation as well so the extension of band my basic band that will be given in the text sheet is from 1 pound till 37500 but due to this 40000 gross contribution it will be extended to 77500 now up to 77500 the rate of tax will be 20% now as a result uh, one one calculation is also needed that uh, the ani and the formula for ani is your net income and that was given as 1 lakh 30000 and from that net income you deduct gross ppc personal pension contribution 40000 and your ani now reduce to 90000 it's a very big surprise because if my ani is below 100000 then i am able to get full 
one two five double zero personal allowance. So it will reduce my income tax liability. So on the one side, I'm getting personal allowance. On the other side, I'm having an extension of band. So it's going to be in the favor of investment in personal pension contribution. So let's see how much benefit we are getting from it. So now calculate income tax liability. So income tax liability out of it. So the net income was 1,30,000 deduct personal allowance that is 12,500 and now the figure is 117,500. I hope this figure is correct. Taxable income and I have to apply tax on this and as per the band available my basic band is up to 77,000. So tax computation as far as the computation is concerned the 77,500 the basic band covers 20% rate and it's going to be 15,500. All the working is needed in the exam. Remember that each and every working should be in place and the remaining income is 117,500. So the remaining income is uh, 40,000 and the rate is double now. So as a result, the income tax liability portion is 16,000 and total tax liability is 31,500. This is the tax liability under investment alternative number two. Now compare the investment alternative number one and the investment alternative number two. So in this way you can see that if we invest in the where it went, it, if we invest in venture capital trust. So my tax liability is 34,900. My tax liability is under VCT. My tax liability is 34,900. 34,900. And under pension, my tax liability is, what was that? 31,500. So a straight saving in terms of liability, there is a saving of, in terms of liability, there is a saving of uh, 3,400. This is in terms of tax liability. And one more benefit that you have to cover is the tax deduction at source. At source, you are getting the benefit of 8,000 that will be submitted by tax authority in your pension funds. So the total benefit is comes to be 11,400. So on the basis of numbers, we can say that the personal pension contribution is highly advisable. But in the question, it was being asked that also identify factors that a person will consider when trying to plan about its investment decision. So listen, if you if you're trying to invest somewhere, it's a normal uh, financial management question F9 or AFM or the journal question. When you're trying to invest somewhere, what factor you usually consider? One of the common factor that one person might consider is the element of risk. So whether whether the investment is risky or investment is not risky. Return is the is the secondary factor. First of all, the uh, risk factor, and the second factor is maturity, the liquidity factor, and the third comes to be a return factor, which we have already calculated. That benefit is eleven thousand four hundred. So as far as return is concerned, I might go with the pension scheme. But as far as the other factors are concerned, so I have to compare on the ground of risk and maturity that which investment is suitable for me. So as far as risk is concerned, let me just identify about VCT, whether it's risky or not. A venture capital trust is relatively a high risk investment. Why? 
because this investment is being made in the shares of a company and if we invest in shares of a company it's going to be a very risky venture it might be a disaster just like nowadays we are looking for a recession or a depression type situation and vct is a type of investment in which you invest in an unquoted trading companies this is the condition that your investment must be at least 70% of investment is be is to be in then unquoted trading companies so it's a kind of restriction that you have to invest in unquoted trading companies but as far as the pension contribution is concerned so normally when we try to invest in a pension fund the pension fund invest in multiple securities so the risk is varied in personal pension relatively less risky you can say that the pension fund is relatively less risky as compared to a vct why why because pension fund organization usually invest in equity as well as debt market so as far as debt market is concerned it's a bit secured market and they always try to invest in terms of portfolio so when they try to in invest in terms of uh, equity or debt portfolio that will bring down some element of risk so this you have to write clearly in your answer and the other factor you can opt for the timing so as far as other factor is concerned uh, i'm also handling some uh, messages some calls during the lectures so tough tough task if someone call you or ask on whatsapp message and you have to reply simultaneously as well okay the second thing is the second factor relatively the first one is risk the second factor is relatively the timing the maturity so as far as the maturity is concerned if you invest in a vct a vct is a type of medium income is not long is not short you have to invest up to 5 years if you withdraw your money before year 5 then the 30% relief will be withdrawn you will not get the relief until and unless you can invest up to 5 years after 5 years you can easily withdraw that amount of money but as far as the pension amount is concerned you cannot withdraw your funds until attaining the state pension age and that is until you will become a 55 years old person you cannot withdraw your money so it's a long term benefits long term investment sorry it's a long term investment so if someone is trying to ask you about that other factors you can also just give them in the information that you might consider risk element you might consider maturity element before moving to the return element return is not the whole decision making factor the other factor the requirement the timing the maturity all together it is to be considered first so in this way a long question comes to an end let me just show you the question again there was three part question one was the redundancy payment those who who haven't studied the previous uh, recorded lecture go to the employment section just read my redundancy payment lecture then uh, solve partnership then comes to the nic then vct and then personal pension contribution so it will cover four topics and then you will be able to complete this course.